Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Lickle Bite Ideas. And I'm Dereed Whitlock. I am the Chief Marketing Officer for Samuel Fields Consulting. And I am delighted to bring you a studio full of guests today, very interesting guests. We are on the final countdown to Christmas. And uh, today is December 9th. It's actually a holiday in Antigua and Barbuda, National Heroes Day. However, it's also it also means that we have, oh my goodness, it's the 9th. So it looks like we have, I can't even do the math, but we have less than, uh, we have less than 15 days till Christmas. So I hope that you have made a start in your Christmas shopping and that you are finding the items that you need. But just in case you are having challenges, we want to tell you about 20 little gift ideas, locally made handcrafted products and services in Antigua and Barbuda that you can consider to gift your friends and family with. Let me get straight to the introductions today. And like I said, we have a few guests today. I want to first introduce, of course, our CEO, Megan Samuel Fields. Megan, how are you? Good afternoon. I am doing very well. And good afternoon to our listeners and our viewers. Have you been getting some Christmas shopping done? I have and still have a bit more to do. And I'm looking at my 20 little gift ideas businesses and getting some ideas for Christmas. Yes, I am to myself. Let me also welcome our other guest today, another guest. We have Dr. Susan Snags Wilson. Dr. Wilson, welcome to the SFCG virtual stage. Oh, I think you're muted, Dr. Susan. You're muted, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate being here and uh, looking forward to a wonderful show today. Great. We are, we're delighted to have you. Dr. Susan Snacks is a motivational author, awesome. and she's going to be talking about a very important topic. She's going to be talking about financial literacy, particularly for children. Now, that's the first. We've talked about financial literacy in all aspects, but we have not yet tackled the whole issue about financial literacy in our youth. And I think it's so important to get them um, on track, aware of money management, um, something that our parents didn't do um, the best job at, I think. I think but they did the best they could. And so we're going to talk to her about her amazing um, book in a moment. But I'm also delighted we have a few of our, if you've been following our pages and following our show, you know that we recently launched 20 little gift ideas. A, we are encouraging everyone to shop local because it's so important. At this time when we're looking to rebuild our economy, why not start at home? Charity begins at home. Why not seek out local purveyors to see how you can support them and in turn, in turn, keep the money in our economy. But we've gotten complaints that people who want to shop local, it's not always easy to find some of the innovative, creative gifts that are out there. So we're doing our little part to bring the, uh, the small businesses together with people who have that interest to see how we can do our part to help jumpstart the economy. And so I'm delighted that we have a few of our business owners here today. I'm going to start. We're going to go to Barbuda first. Odelia. Welcome to Little Bite Ideas. Tell us a bit about, we're going to come back to hear a bit about your product. I'm going to make it totally a surprise and have you tell everyone about it. We have also um, Orina David from Anero Delicacies, and she makes some amazing products as well. Orina, welcome to our virtual stage. Hello, everyone. Hi. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. I hope that you are 
I hope you're getting a lot of business and I, and you're probably baking from dusk until dawn. You have no idea as we speak. <laughs> oh my goodness. So you're calling us from your kitchen. I love that. That's wonderful. And is D has D joined us? I don't see her. No, she hasn't joined. So it's just okay. So we're, we're expecting okay. another business to join us. She's had some challenges with her voice. I, I spoke to her. I said, voice sounds fine to me. It's how you feel. So let's see if we can get her to join. But with such a packed agenda here today, I want to make sure that our business owners are featured um, and have adequate time to share their product with us. So let's go over to Miss Barbuda. Tell us about your product and tell us your inspiration. And we'd love to see some of what you you offer, if you can just bring it up on the screen. So introduce yourself. I haven't told them anything about Jim, leaving it all up to you. Is she frozen? Hear me? Uh, we're, yes, we're, we can hear you now. Yeah, we can hear you, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think she's having some technical issues. So okay. she is gone. Tell you what, we'll come back to Odelia, but Arena. Hi. What's the likelihood of having two people on the stage with, with the first name starting with O? I don't know. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I have well, I know your family. You come from you you're you're used to you're used to it because you have you have it's four girls and you all begin. I have all O's in my family, and um, surprisingly, you're connecting me with a Barbudan today, and well, I'm connected right. back. My husband is Barbudan, so I forgot about that. Wow, <laughs> you're in good company. So, so I so guess tell I'm us a bit about your business here today. So give us your elevator pitch. Tell us about your business. Okay, a name of delicacies is simply my name spread backwards. Okay, and that's I figured that out. out. Okay, so a name of delicacies is my name, and what we do is we offer delicacies. We offer we, we serve the sweet tooth needs of any and everyone. Whether you're vegan, whether you're sugar-free, uh, or you're diabetic, whether you just have a craving for everything sweet, all out sweet regardless, we, we are here to serve. And so that is what I'm here for. And so this season, what we offer is something different. Yes, we offer the rum cake and we offer the all the other big cakes that other persons would like, but we also are aware that over many years of doing this, there's sometimes you have you put a cake on the te table and not everybody like that particular kind of cake. So mm -hmm. what we have decided to do, we mix it up. So we have a variety of desserts that have put together what we call a desert platter that have a variety of desserts to suit everybody's sweet tooth needs. So I'm not sure if you can see this. Ooh, that looks good. Wow. So we uh, we have here five different types of bread. We have apple cinnamon. We have cherry, we have coconut sweet bread, we have banana bread, and we also have a orange, orange cranberry. And oh, so wow. we have, there are five different types of fruit breads. We have five different types of cupcakes. We have cheese, hot chocolate, vanilla, red velvet, and the warm cake. We do it in the, in the cupcake form. And we have five different types of cookies as well. We have the Grinch, pink velvet, um, cranberry oatmeal, um, chocolate chip, and a white chocolate cranberry and five different types of bonies. So we, oh my have, goodness. <laughs> we have five different types of bonies. So we have the, um, we have the red velvet bony. We have the chocolate, um, chocolate coconut. We have the chocolate chip. We have the chocolate caramel and, um, one more. We have, oh, we have the chocolate, uh, we have the chocolate chip cheesecake, the cheesecakes world brownie bites. And then we have other specialties that we are having here. We have the coconut macaron. We also have, um, um, this is called a cranberry bliss bar. That was a sell-off last year as well. And we also have some things that I didn't get to put in this today because of the of the notice. <laughs> but we also wow. put in the apple pie bag. That is amazing, Arena. 
Yes. So, so tell me, so do you box you it up and sell it to get it so that's sold you. as like a, a box, a dessert I, box? So we, so we we provide it in a box. We have different price range. We start from we have fifty dollar mm-hmm. boxes that you can give to an individual, to eighty for a family, to a hundred or two hundred for yeah, for a bigger gathering. So it all depends on your price right. range. We we have something to suit everybody's pocket. And you know that makes so much sense because you know why should why should you have why should you eat only one dessert or be limited to two things you know you're having a party you spice it up and you give people variety spice it up. you know they're times just, when yeah. you, you get a you you have a whole cake you start slicing it the kids don't like it your, your fr- friends don't like it and it goes to waste so i like exactly. the idea of, of giving people choices that is right. so amazing thanks for sharing tell us really quickly how people can contact you okay so they can contact me at seven seven zero two three seven three um or four six four three eight one two send me a whatsapp or say we or send me um or give me a call or they can check out check us out on facebook or instagram um and there were delicacies we're on facebook and you can also sit, place your order or send us a message right there but we are there and we're willing to serve we are baking away so we have more than enough to spread with you fantastic do us a favor and drop your information in our in our Facebook comments so that our guests can can reach out to you. Thank yeah. you so much. Don't don't bake yourself too much this Christmas. You know, give yourself some time to enjoy all this. I do. Thank God the holiday is coming on a weekend, so I have the Monday and the Tuesday to rest. So oh, that's right. Okay. That's right. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Arena. Thanks, Arena. Really Arena. enjoyed. Really oh, nice. I, thank you. I was like, it's easier to ask you what, what you don't make than to ask you what you make, because everything was covered. Every flavor. Oh, <laughs> I <my> tried. <laughs> that is wonderful. And we also have it in the sugar-free version as well, and the vegan. So, wow. that's amazing. To serve everybody. That's Great. amazing. Yep, I'm, I'm really impressed. Thanks for sharing. Thank okay, you. let's Thanks, see if we Serena. can get our Barbudan uh, friend I think she, to she's, Barbudan Emblem. Uh, um, technical difficulties Barbudan again. Emblem is the name of the company, and she actually makes jewelry. So Arena was in our food and beverage category, and Barbuda Emblem is in our accessories, handbags and accessories. So Odelia is back. Tell us a bit about your business, Odelia, your inspiration. Uh, and what your business is all about. Okay, she's having some, some challenges. Okay, thank you. Sorry about the issues I've been having. Uh, I think I'm not really. Yes. So, Barbuda Emblem is basically uh, an idea that my mom and I came up with. As a thing, we automatically think Barbuda, right? So, usually a lot of no lost children. I don't think this is going to work out today. <laughs> Something seems to be a little off there. We lost her again, huh? We have. We have. All right. We're so... going to come back. Let's go over to Dr. Susan Snags Wilson. Yes. Dr. Snags Wilson, welcome. I am so impressed about your book. Tell us, tell us a bit about your book. I haven't had the chance to really. I went online and did some searches and got the gist of it. But tell mm-hmm. us in a nutshell what your book is about. Yeah, absolutely. And again, thanks for the opportunity. You know, one of the challenges that I noticed early was, as you've mentioned, financial literacy with children. And um, I wrote this book, it would have been about uh, quite a a few years ago, to be honest, when I had a young son. And um, I wrote it with the idea of being able to teach young children about saving money. As you know, I'm a a banker at heart. And uh, I thought this was a gap that needed to be closed. And so the book, Brandon Adventures, started at a very young age when my son was seven. And um, it took me about, I would say, close to 15, maybe even 20 years to publish, you know, to actually oh, wow. get to, to publication. So it's, um, it's you know, wrapped up in, in an experience of a, a black boy who, you know, in his family, he's been saving money. He's been, 
you know, um, he sold a couple of things in a garage sale and he's working at home, getting an allowance and so forth. And he's able to put his money away in a little jar and save it. And then, you know, at the end, his mom is saying to him, well, let's take him to the bank to open a bank account, which to me is, you know, setting an example for children to understand that their activities matter. It's not pushed by the wayside, but it's taken very seriously and teaching kids that, you know, if they save and as parents, parents can also support their children in adopting those right behaviors. That's a really, really great story. So so how how did your son take the book? Uh, I was well, curious to see how this was, you know. <laughs> I'm glad, this received. glad you asked. Uh, well, now, of course, he's much older. He's uh, grow, a grown man. And uh, I believe he's a little bit um, sort of out there in terms of his, I don't think the thoughts have really kicked in yet, right? Um, so I, I, I do believe, though, that he appreciates the idea that it's important for children to save. And he sets a good example for himself. I mean, he's 30, he already has his own house, he's got a boat, you know, he's married, so very responsible. One of the things that came out of it though, as over the years, and I'm sure you probably asked some more questions, but for me, when I first started, I was, as I mentioned, I was writing it through the eyes of a mother. And over the years, as I was doing my, my academic learning through social justice education, I actually had a little understanding of, um, of a twist, I would say, in terms of looking at this uh, through the eyes of social justice. And so the, the book has four themes in it that I can share with you. First of all, yes, I've mentioned, you know, a black boy in print, which is important because I find nowadays we don't see a lot of our children, you know, being um, represented in, in a positive light, I would say, on television, in books, you know, in stories. A lot of the stories are usually very Eurocentric. I'm, I grew up in Canada and it's it's hard pressed to see, you know, stories that um, portray children and black children in a positive light. And that's only because there is a stigma that comes with, you know, behind the scenes, you know, there's always that sense of black families, they're single parents, um, single mom, there's the absent dad. And so what I'm trying to do, and that's the second theme, is identify that Black families are normal. It doesn't need to be dramatic. There doesn't need to be issues around, you know, drugs and all these other things and, and homelessness or single parents. Like in this book, it's a simple Black family, a mom, a dad, a brother, and a sister. And they're living life in a normal way, you know, doing normal things. And so what I'm trying to do is really for people to reimagine what Black families look like. They, they're normal. Thirdly, uh, the book shows the fact that um, women can advance to certain levels. So in the book, the, the branch manager is actually a woman. And I did that oh, on wow. purpose because I think I want uh, others to see that, you know, especially young children to identify that they can reach that stage where they can be bankers, they can be dentists, they can be doctors. And again, just normalizing our everyday occupations so that black children can identify with these characters. So there's, there are many, I would say, themes in the book and coming through the eyes of social justice education I had to, you know, sort of rethink, re-navigate and adjust the book to more modern times so that we understand that, yes, you know, this is a book of, that's current, but mm -hmm. it exemplifies various topics and themes that are relevant for today's environment. I think that is so powerful. Awesome. I think, I think um, it is, it, like you said, there's so many themes and I mean, Dr. Snacks Wilson, it sounds like it's your life story. And, you know, it's it's also showing um, or at least tracking your path in terms of a banker, well accomplished, a PhD. So I, I definitely hear an interweaving of, um, like you said, social justice, opportunities, normalizing black families, all very important role models and themes and um, 
uh, behaviors mm -hmm. that are positive that uh, families would share. And I can imagine it sounds like I haven't read the book. I look forward to reading the book, but it certainly sounds like something that any family should consider this Christmas adding to their library, adding to um, their, their, their um, reading lists for children because it, there's so many powerful messages. Yeah. Uh, question, mm -hmm. what, what's next for the book? Is it going to be a, where, where do you see as, what do you see as the next step for you in terms of your literary path? Good question. You know, I've um, I love I've always loved writing. Um, I journal a lot, and um, you know, along with with this book, I have another one that was published in collaboration with um, Mrs. Casey, Mrs. Stacy Kelsick, who is actually in an, in Antigua and uh, a lovely person. So we've done a book combined called A Walk in Her Shoes. And is so, Stacy Kelsick, the flight attendant. No, she's not. She's a banker as well. Oh wow! Nice. Her sister, somebody. Okay, I'm, I'm probably confusing her with her sister, maybe. Oh, maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so our goal, uh, and getting back to to the book, um, I want to have two different paths. One book or one segment that's acknowledging children, as I've mentioned, and identifying with them in in print. So for Brandon's adventures, our next adventure is looking at possibly his trip to Antigua, because oh, nice. I think there's a, a, a rich heritage that exists in Antigua. Since I've been living in Antigua for the past three years, you know, I've been able to identify some key aspects and key histories that I think will be a great, you know, great stories, different touch points and so forth. And then, of course, the other section is I thought of writing the way I ended this book without giving it away, but I guess I'll have to. He has a loose tooth. And so his mom says, oh, we have to book an appointment for the dentist. And so the next step then is to take him to the dentist and unpack, you know, what does a black dentist, you know, portray and how, you know, in the book, it, this ending, he said, you know, he thought he could be a bank manager. But then when he sees a dentist now, he'll probably say, oh, mom, when I grow up, I'm going to be a dentist. That's it, just, that's it just explores opportunities, right? And let kids see themselves in all these different aspects and to understand that they're not locked in any specific area or, or category, that the mm -hmm. sky's the limits for them. In the book, he also there's also a sister, which is my, you know, sort of portraying my daughter, and um, I'm thinking of doing a little segment for her, for young girls to see themselves as they also, you know, grow into, into womanhood. So there's lots of different um, ideas that I'm working on. Um, my, my publisher, which is, um, you know, really excited. I, I know he, you know, wants to continue working with us. And yeah, we'll see where, where things go. And it's, it's creative, um, creative work that we're, we're doing together. I, I so love this idea. It's really great because it sounds to me that there are lots of opportunities, not not telling you how to write your, your plot and everything, mm -hmm. but it sounds to me like whether Brandon opts to be a banker or he opts to be a dentist, yes. Brandon still needs to focus on money management. He need, you know, his financial literacy needs need to be cultivated. If he's going to be a dentist, ch chances are he's going to be a small business owner. He's going to be running his business. So yes. Brandon is on track. Brandon is <laughs> uh, getting the the knowledge and the training. Maybe we should bring Brandon as an, an intern, Megan, when he comes to Antigua. <laughs> maybe he needs to be an intern at SFCG and, and um, we get him behind the cameras or something. <laughs> yeah, he loves, he loves Antigua. The kids, you know, the whole family just loves it. We love Antigua. <laughs> Oh, it's been, oh, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah. nice. Great experience nice. for us. Yeah, absolutely. That's um, great. True story. But, I'll share with you. Yeah. I um, I had I have a copy of the book here. So Oh, fantastic. And it's a lovely book. I've read it. Yeah, well, really nice. Creative Interlude great, did a great job. The um, Even the illustrator and so forth, very good illustrations um, you, you can see in it. But the... Um, I, I had a friend of mine in, in Antigua that I, he bought it for his daughter and he said the, the night she read it, like she was just so taken up with the activities, she actually um, said to her dad, okay, daddy, what can I do around the house so I can raise some money? 
and she got a jar and immediately she wanted to start saving some money. And then, of course, she wanted to know about opening her bank account. Oh, excellent. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's was, amazing. Yeah, I was really inspired by that because that's the motivation. I want kids uh, yes. to do it and say, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do some of these things. That's great. I like that. That's fantastic. I like but that. Dr. Snags Wilson, we're going to come back to you. Thank you for that intro. We want you to stick around because I'd like to hear, get some advice from you for more of the adults. We have 20 business owners that we're working with in an incubator. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have a rare opportunity to get some advice from a banker, an established banker. This is why you have to show up on the little bite ideas. You just never know what nuggets of information will be shared. So let's skip on over. And oh, I I was thinking too, when Brandon comes to, comes to Antigua, Brandon needs to go to Barbuda as well. <laughs> Have you been to Barbuda, having lived in Antigua? Have you made yes. it to Barbuda? Yes, yes. I think I heard I was one of those people who went to Barbuda as quick as I got to Antigua just to visit and um, partake in those beaches as well. So oh, yes, fantastic. Um, at the opportunity, actually I went twice with the- Good fantastic. for you, nice. Great. So let's keep on all back to, um, is Odelia back? Or did we lose her? No, I think we've lost Odelia. Oh, no. Yeah. And did Denise, did sweet, did uh, D Sweet Stuff ever join us? No. She's been having some difficulties as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Megan, do we have any questions from our audience? And uh, I, I, not I was time. remiss, I think moment. I was so caught up with um, Anero's Cakes and then hearing about Brandon that we did not really greet our listeners like we typically do. But to all of our listeners, this is a show where we like to share ideas. We love to hear your comments. We know that you're there, we can see you, but we love when you drop comments in our chat. Just say hello, tell us how you're enjoying the show, how your Christmas shopping is going, just share anything with us. And uh, also we invite you to like us on Facebook, Samuel Fields Consulting, or if you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, we have a wealth of information. All of our shows are on YouTube, all of our webinars. Um, we have quite some interesting stuff there. And of course, once you subscribe, and we upload new stuff, you, you get a notification. So we invite you to join. Any, do, do we have any um, comments that you wanna share, Megan? Yeah, there are no comments here. Well, actually, um, there is one, a comment, and it's an interesting comment because it says, um, let me get it. Oh, I see another one. Well, let me go with this one first. What are the three top things that you think a sole proprietor needs to consider or to be aware of? What are the three top things you think a sole proprietor needs to consider or be aware of? That's a very broad question. And I'm not sure whether to direct it to my accountant or my banker. <laughs> well, I can, I can jump in yes. and I would say, um, a sole proprietor, if a sole proprietor is asking this question, then I make the assumption that it has to do with the business and how do you get a business that is successful. And so the three things I would say to any sole proprietor um, that you should consider when you're setting up your business is please have a plan. And I know business plans have been, have been given a, a hard rap thinking that it's very big and convoluted and expensive. I'm not speaking about anything huge, but I'm saying if you're going to be doing a business, you need to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, then I'm not sure if you're going to know where you're going. So have a plan, and that plan should include, and this is the other thing that you should focus on, a budget you need to be realistic with what you, the money that you have or the money that's available to you. So please have a budget. 
so you know what it is you have to spend and how you intend to spend it. And then the third thing I think you have to consider are your customers. Who exactly are you trying to reach? Because you're, you're, there are different types of customers. And as a business owner, you need to know the particular type of customers that you want to reach. There are many more things that a sole proprietor needs to consider, but I think those are the three first things that a sole proprietor should consider. I don't know if Dr. Susan wants to add anything to that, but yeah, okay. yeah, no, absolutely. You know, you took the words right out of my mouth. I always say begin with a plan. And the reason why you do the plan, it's very holistic. It's not just about your business, but it also looks at what relationships you need to have as you build out your business. Relationships around having a good banker um, that can help you uh, as you, you know, in your growth of the business, support you financially, you know, get those loans or credit cards or whatever is needed, the bank account, those sort of things. I think it's important to have a lawyer because um, a lawyer can, as of course, you need it to set up, you know, some some aspects of the business. But as your business grow, it'll give you an idea of which direction you want to go in. Mm -hmm. You may not always be a sole proprietor. You may find your opportunity to partner with someone and create a limited company or even a corporation. And of course, an accountant. Accountants are so needed because many times, again, you can fall into trouble with governments and so forth and revenues and you know not um, know why or how this happens. So an accountant is important. The fourth thing I would say, and along with what you've talked about, the budget, is planning for success. I think many people start a small business thinking that I'm not sure if it's going to work. So they start small and think small. But I always say plan for success because when success comes, you may not have the resources to move in the direction that will create growth. So have that plan. You know, um, I would say a one year, a three year and a five five year plan that allows you to decide when to hire somebody, somebody to support you. Because many times small business owners, and I've seen this, I've seen this a couple of times where the person is a chief cook and bottle washer oh, yeah. and um, not able to collect money. I've had where people actually did a service for me as, as a small business owner and I'm waiting to pay and nobody's, nobody's collecting money, you know, and so forth. And that's receivables that, you know, can go by the wayside. So knowing when to hire somebody is also important. So absolutely, lots of key points you shared. I like what you said, plan for success. That I like is, that too. I think, love it. You know, you know we, we say think big, but planning for success is even bigger than thinking big because mm -hmm. you've already embraced it. You've already put it into the universe that, mm -hmm. you know, if so, so if you're, if you're planning for success, you have to model your behavior accordingly. You can't continue to act like a struggling business person with just ideas. You have to start modeling your, your whole mindset mm -hmm. to embrace some of the elements and some of the, um, just some of the benefits and the positioning that comes with success. So I think that's very powerful. We've, we've had some really powerful statements made on, on this show. And um, so Megan, maybe we sit back and we, we kind of pull them together. Because I mean, we, every week, we really get some, some great anecdotes Absolutely. and, and um, nuggets from our guests. Oh, yeah. So still no word from Barbuda, huh? No. I really, I really feel bad because she... She wanted. To, she had so much to share, and um, yes, she was sharing them is, before we started. Yeah, her and product it's, is so awesome. creative. Yes, we have another question. Yes, and it says, "Can we merge financial literacy and fintech earlier in the education path for children?" That is amazing. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a good question, and I think understanding the differences is where we would start. So when I think of financial literacy, especially for children, it's really back to the basics, you know, teaching children the value of money, but also how to respect money. Mm -hmm. And when I say respecting, and I'm sure we've had this happen many times, even as children, is <clears throat> children tend to sometimes think that money comes out, let's say, of the bank machine. You know, it's, I've had my children say, Mommy, buy this for me. And I says, I don't have any on me. And they'll say, well, 
just just go get it in the machine, right? And so they don't have this concept of what really is money because technically it is something that's out there. You know, how do you make it? You don't see it all the time. It's in your bank, you know, and so forth. So them understanding to respect it and I respect the value of it. When we think of um, fintech, fintech is more dealing with um, companies that are not necessarily brick and mortar, but offer services behind the scenes, you know, like um, financial services. So you don't really see them, they're out there, right? Very valuable, I would say, in the economy and, um, and, and it has its place. But again, the, the financial aspect of it and understanding money is a little bit different than what FinTech necessarily is about. One is more about technology, I would say. And I mean, kids are, they're so smart today and they understand this. But um, you'll find there's a lot more various um, currencies that are coming out of these companies. You know, now we've got digital currencies. We've, we've heard of Bitcoin. We've heard of Ethereum. All these different you know currencies that are coming out. But that's money itself. That's the currency. But understanding financial literacy is really a behavior. How do you deal with it when you have it? Whether it's you know, Antiguan dollars, whether it's, you know, I said EC dollars, whether it's US dollars, whatever, that's the currency. But when you have it, how do you actually deal with it? How do you behave when you have it? Do you set, have budgets? Do you set money aside? Do you give to your churches? Do you give to charity? Do you um, put aside money for a rainy day? That's the behavior we want people to think about when they think about money and financial mm -hmm. literacy. Fantastic. No, thanks for that. That really was a great question. I wouldn't know how to begin to even start answering that. So thank you for helping to shed light and, and increasing my knowledge as well in terms of fintech and financial literacy. Um, it, it, it's very, it's amazing. And I think for a lot of people, the, the terminology is bandied about so much that no one ever stops to really compare, you know, or to help define what these terms mean. Mm -hmm, but Megan, mm -hmm. why don't we take the opportunity to highlight, I was hoping to get my video to unveil our 20 companies and hopefully we'll have it by next week. We'll probably, I'm sure I'll get it this evening and put it on our social media. But why don't we, and uh, if our tech, can you send it to our tech people so that you can um, put the list up so that we can follow and then we'll go through the list of the 20 companies that are in our 20 little gift ideas and for anyone who is not familiar with 20 little gift ideas we did a search we um our ceo was on the radio did several interviews we got some coverage um on in various publications about it and essentially we went on a quest to find 20 little gift little gift ideas that would make great gifts innovative sustainable creative gifts that could be used for uh this year at a time when we have all these issues with supply chains um people are out of work they've started a little business a side hustle they may have expanded a business that they had previously. So we figured this would be a great Christmas to really get things going and to um, support small businesses. And at the same time, encourage everyone to shop local so that we can all contribute to the rebuilding of our economy. So are we ready with our list? So we've come up with 20 lists and they're in several categories. And we are going to highlight these companies momentarily. Tell me when you're ready, Megan, so that we can get the list up and go through these companies that we're going to support. Oprah has her list and SFCG, we have ours. <laughs> her favorite things and we have ours. And um, okay, so here is the list. And we're going to drop it in our Facebook chat. And if you go to our page, it's, it's all over our page. It's on our website um as well so we encourage you to check these uh companies out we can't hear you megan i'm sorry so these are the lists 
the list this is the list of businesses for our 20 little gift ideas under the category of art and home decor we have butterfly kisses for the soul gifts gadgets goodies studio l designs tada creatives on the bags and accessories, we have J Jewels and Barbuda Emblem Pink Sand Jewelry. On the event planning, we have Eloquent Voiceover Artist, K&E Party Time, Von Joseph Photography, and Wadadley Event Services. On the food and beverage, we have Anero Delicacies, Blends, D's Sweet Stuff, Hunts Farms, Jen Wren's Outdoor Cafe, Natura Creations, Paddling Duck, Screw Pine, and Seasons. And on the health, fitness, and beauty, we have Beauty Works. And because the month of December we are featuring our authors, we have included the authors that we are featuring this month. And we have spoken about Brandon's Adventures by Dr. Susan Snags Wilson. The Four Money Bears by Mac Gardner, and The Manager's First Aid Kit by Joan Underwood. So these are some businesses that you can contact to get your Christmas goodies and gifts from. And what we want you to do, we want you first off to purchase from the small businesses on our list, then post on social media why you shop there, and what's great about them. And then tag 10 friends as well as SFCG on Facebook and you could qualify to win some prizes from these very 20 little gift ideas businesses as well as books from our authors. Thank you so much. And I know Dr. Snags Wilson has a book and we're gonna get one of her books and put it under the Christmas tree so that someone can win an amazing book this this uh, Christmas that they can gift to a family member. But again, I see it as a gift for the entire family. If a child is getting uh, education about finances and improving their financial literacy, it's a big win for the entire family. So I encourage everyone to go out and purchase the book. But at the same time, if you're buying other gifts on our list, this is probably one of the gifts that you could win. So it pays to, to support our 20 little gift ideas and our three authors. When we thought about it, we said, listen, we have 20 gifts that we're going to promote. But listen, we want people, we're about financial literacy, financial education. Why not ensure that our books, our motivational books are also a part of our gift list? So Dr. Snags Wilson, tell us, where can persons purchase your book? So at this point, it is online at um, brandonsadventures.com. And um, oh, people can email me. It's info at brandonsadventures.com. And I'd certainly be able to get them a copy. So you can order it online or let me know and we'll arrange to have a copy delivered. Great. That's awesome. And it's really an easy read, an easy read. But uh, when you read it, at least when I read it, I felt it was a good feeling. It's like, OK, I can identify. I have boys, so I guess maybe that's why as well. And I could see how this makes a difference, or this will make a difference in young person's life. And I like what you said earlier about the different themes. So it's not just about financial literacy, but it's about featuring a normal black family. Yeah. It doesn't Absolutely. have to be that whenever a black family is in the news or is, is on display, that it has to be some drama attached. So I found it to be quite, quite useful, very interesting. And uh, my boys aren't here, but and they're they're young men. But I'm going to ask them to read it because I think there is a lot that we can get from it. Yeah, oh, it, looks like, it, it looks like we've lost to read. Yeah, okay. yeah, I saw that she. Uh, <laughs> we just lost her. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So we are going to ask you, Doctor mm -hmm. Snags Wilson, as we do all our guests, 
we ask our guests for a little idea. So mm -hmm. you've shared a lot with us, so we would love to get a little idea from you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that I do see that there is an opportunity for persons, I would say adults, because as um, was asked, you know, what can adults do? You know, and you talked about this earlier, it's about budgeting, the importance of a budget, um, even for small businesses as well, same thing, you know, making sure there's a budget. But I believe the opportunity to pay ourselves first is important. And when I say pay yourselves first, it's, it, it's, it's proven, you know, we pay bills, we pay, you know, we're always paying out money type thing, but the opportunity to set up a strict budget where you actually set aside, if it's 10% of your own income, whatever that looks like, or 10% of the leftovers, whatever that looks like. So let's say you set up a budget and you know you have to pay light bills, mortgage, car payments, you know, whatever that is, whatever the residual is, you know, set aside 10% and pay yourself first. And basically you would open a separate bank account or something, even if it's a bank that you don't go too often, but you can set up an automatic payment that every month a certain amount is transferred into that account. And it's something that you're not going to touch, you're not going to use, but it creates, I would say, a sense of confidence um, and a safety net that if something should happen, you know, you have that funds, those funds to support you. I would also say, look at it from a long-term perspective. You know, you can have short-term goals, but you can have longer-term goals too. And that's where you can save for those longer situations. You know, as we get older, you know, illnesses, retirement and so forth, we don't always have to rely on the government to, you know, to have to pay to, for some of these things. So the opportunity to start saving early, start saving with a plan, setting a budget and paying yourself first it's a good best practice to get into. I know with my accounts, well, I've, I always, when I was a child, I always loved saving. I used to save 10 cents a day. And, you know, wherever I can find 10 cents, I'd put it in a jar and, you know, it was exciting. But as I got older, as soon as I started working, immediately I set aside that account and started, you know, transferring money. And it becomes a habit. And it's so nice. As your pay increases, you, you know, increase that amount and it goes into your account. But the piece is some account, some banks, and I can't really speak to all the banks, but some banks have um, an opportunity, what, what is called sort of, um, we call it bank the rest. It's, it's a terminology that our bank has, but it's where you spend so much. Let's say you spend a dollar fifty or a dollar seventy five, then that extra twenty five cents gets sweeped over into another account. And I think they call it rounding up rounding up yes. yes my bank does it i think it's so amazing yeah yes take advantage of that because again you can set up a bank account and you're saving without even realizing money is going into it you know money is is a very interesting thing it's um it comes and goes and it circulates very quickly and so it's important to understand good money management through budgeting um and not being selfish with it i'm not saying that you're not allowed to you know, offer to buy somebody a coffee or to give to your church and charity, because that is all part of financial literacy and, you know, financial responsibility. But understanding that how you make it work for you, how you can um, treat it responsibly by saving, you know, spending on the right, um, I would say when it's a right, but um, not, not wasting it pretty much, right, on things that's frivolous or things that's not going to return that asset to you is important. So being able to save through a budget is um, something I'd recommend to start doing early. In fact, some of the literature says $25 a month is a great place to start. People usually think they have to start with this a lot of money, you know, and no, $25 a month, let's at least start that. That's a great idea. I mean, I, I believe most persons have heard that mm -hmm. and haven't put it into practice. So I really do hope that we take this idea and run with it. Let us pay ourselves first. Let us put aside some money each month, tuck it away in an account that we are not going to be touching and we'll, we'll all be surprised at how much it grows. So I love that, especially we're dealing with small businesses. So that's a good tip 
to give to the small businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And small business owners, I mean, it's very challenging because the money very. becomes commingled, right? Exactly. So if you can, again, pay yourself as well, you know, if it's $25 or more per month, set that aside. I agree. Yeah, excellent. That is great. Good well, stuff. this has been an amazing show. Do we have any more questions? Mika, no, do we, we want to make sure that we get everyone's more, questions? No, there are no more questions. Some attention. Well, great. I thought well, I saw to Susan. I thought I, saw, I thought I saw one question that asked about when can this um, financial literacy be included in schools? And right, that was one of the questions we had asked. But yeah, I think yes, we did. I think we answered the schools that one. part. We spoke yeah. about yeah, but you're right. We didn't quite tackle the schools part. Yeah, so yeah. That be in schools. I would, I would say to you know, it's not just in the schools. It could be taught at home too, right? Because um, if sometimes if we wait for the schools to come up with curriculum around this, it can take quite some time. So immediately, as soon as children can, you know, understand how to count, they should be able to understand what you know how to manage and save money. Well, I would say as soon as they can learn to play computer games. Oh, know. that's really. <laughs> if they can play computer games, they can they can learn about money. Trust me. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so the so the bottom line, it's never too early. It's never too early. Never Once they're cognitive, I mean, it's different for every child. But I've I've been amazed. You're traveling and you see kids that look like they're two years old or a year and a half, and they have their tablets. Mm -hmm. So to me, if if they have the ability to 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 figure that out it's time to begin to plant those seeds somehow. Mm -hmm. Exactly, especially with the games nowadays where you have to buy coins and you know, exactly. all the yes. games require kids to yeah. purchase coins so they go to their parents and ask them, mommy, can I have your credit card? I need to buy some coins. I, oh yeah. Right exactly. away, exactly. that conversation. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, this That's has been an amazing, it amazes me how we can start out talking about Brandon and end up talking about investment and 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 and, and fin fintech and finlit and all that stuff yeah. but it's it's how you package it and i think we we bring, we get such joy from bringing um more awareness to everyone about financial literacy financial empowerment financial responsibility as you mentioned and especially over the holidays it's something that we want people to we want to give the gift of knowledge and to inspire everyone to um just practice better financial habit habits, model your behavior, um, look towards retirement, and you know, take good care of yourself and your families. This has been an amazing episode, Dr. Susan Snags Wilson. It is such a pleasure to meet you. Hopefully, you will visit us again soon. Hopefully, um, we can get Brandon his um, internship at <laughs> SFCG. And we wish you every success with your um, with your with your series, Brandon. I think will grow up to be what he'll probably work for the World Bank or something. You know, I, I see great things in Brandon's future. So we really appreciate you sharing with us to our businesses. Twenty little bit ideas, twenty little, little gift ideas. Sorry, we encourage you to support them. Go to our website for more information. And uh, we'll be back next week. We have another author. We have Mr. Mac Gardner. He also has a children's book about financial literacy. It's called The Four Money Bears. So we, in we invite you to, to tune in again, and we will have another group from our 20 little gift ideas, our business owners. We want to spotlight them. And we, we encourage you to shop local, shop responsibly, and uh, join us again next week right here on Nickel Bite Ideas. It's been a pleasure, and we want to wish everyone a joyous holiday season, and we'll see you back for one more episode before Christmas when we'll have a very special celebration. Thanks to everyone for joining us and to our guests. Everyone have a great evening. Bye, Thanks everyone. so much. Bye-bye.